today we have a returning guest, Greg Manorino. He has his website, TradersChoice.net, and his YouTube channel, Greg Manorino. And I am very happy to have him back. It is great to be here once again. Thank you for having me. Hey, Greg, thanks for being on here. And let's talk about the economy here. Okay. Now, you're into stocks, and we've been seeing that the stock market really hasn't been moving. I mean, it bounces around a very little bit, but no major moves at all. And I've been seeing reports that insiders are getting out of the stock market now. And I wanted to get your take on what's happening in the market. Are insiders getting out at this point? And where do you think the market is going? That's a great question. And I'm telling you something is going on. And it's a very interesting dynamic. I'm, uh, and I, I'm happy to talk about it here. So what have we been watching with regard to the stock market for, for the past couple of weeks? It's gone nowhere. No big moves in any direction. Um, interestingly, is we're seeing the VIX, the volatility index, hit a 24-year low. What we are seeing here um, is a pretty much meltdown across the board with regard to commodities. Um, that is a very telling thing. And what I want people to just understand at its most basic level is you cannot have a commodity meltdown um, in an environment where we're supposedly in some type of a global economic recovery. Uh, the commodities are sending us a signal loud and clear that something is going on. Not only are we seeing commodities under pressure here, I'm referring to crude oil as well, um, but we're also seeing a lot of cash come out of the bond market. You know, I watch the bond market more than I watch the stock market. I get all my signals as to what's going to happen in the stock market from the bond market. We've seen a lot of cash come out of the bond market. What that has been doing is pushing up the, the their yields. The 10-year yield specifically is the benchmark that most people should follow that are looking to gain uh, a direction on where the market goes. So, into a, into a little nice package. So we got a stock market that's going nowhere, kind of at the flat line for a while. We have um, a sell-off here across the board, pretty much in commodities. We have a sell-off in the bond market. We have a dollar that's under pressure. And this has been pretty much the theme for the past several weeks. So what what is what's the signal here? And it's a great question, and I want people to think about it. So all this cash that has been coming out of commodities, that has been coming out of the bond market coming out of investors that are in the dollar is kind of waiting. It's kind of sitting there on the side, just waiting for somewhere to go. We saw some of this just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, where some of that cash that was sitting on the sidelines was making its way over to crude oil, which made a, a th over 3% move in one day. So what I'm waiting for um, is to see where this, this cash that has come out of all these assets where it's going to go next, it also could be used to short the market. So this comes into where you were talking about insiders that are getting out of the market. I've been hearing this too um, for quite a while now. Are, are these insiders going to use the cash that they're pulling out of the market to buy puts or bet against the market? Are they waiting for assets to turn around here? Um, I'm not really sure. But I can promise you this: I'm looking for I'm looking for opportunity here, and I I'm not sure of the direction of the market here. Honestly, in the short run, we've had quite a, a run up lately. I would not be surprised to see the stock market give back a little bit. I I would love to see the stock market give back a little bit to so we can get in on better prices. But are we about to witness? some event here i mean i don't know and that's what i'm trying i've been talking to a lot of friends of mine who've been traders one of my friends has been a trader for over 30 years and we're all we all talk about this stuff okay where's all this cash that is sitting on the sidelines where's it going to go is it going to go into this asset is it going to go back into the stock market back into the bond market is it going to be used to short the entire market don't know yet um but it's very interesting to watch that but my biggest tip that I, I that I can give anyone is watch the 10 year yield. We hit 2.4 today. Um, if that continues to rise, um, we're going to start to see pressure on the stock market. There is no doubt about it. So you'll see some more cash come out of there. And then again, what do we all know, people? We know that cash does not go to money heaven. It's going to go somewhere else. 
So all this cash that's leaving these assets is going to find someplace else to go. Is it going to go back into commodities? I think it might do that. But we have to watch it and see. Do you think that they're pulling their cash out of the market because of what's happening in the economy or what's happening with the debt ceiling or the budget? Um, because right now they, they signed off on a budget that will bring the government all the way to September 30th. It's another trillion dollars. And the debt ceiling, we know we're going to hit that. And the economy all around us, I mean, how many more retail stores are closing now? We just hear one after another. Do you think people are nervous? Do I think, you know what? Anyone that's watching the mainstream financial channels, they're not nervous at all because they're being brainwashed. There, there, there are zombies that have been, fortunately, thank God for shows like yours. Um, the, these people, for the most part, unless they're out there trying to find a job and they can't do it, um, uh, most people who already, I guess, have a job right now are, again, living in their uh, moment to moment, you know, not thinking ahead. Uh, living in the moment and not realizing what's really going on all around them. Absolutely. Retail's, retail's getting punished. Stores closing all over the place. This is going to cost people jobs. We are not in an economic recovery whatsoever. And again, commodities are telling us that. Commodities are telling us that we are not in a recovery. Like you, would, if you were to turn on CNBC, you're going to hear Bob Pisani. I happen to like the guy. But all he does is talk, it, talk about it at the end of pretty much every uh, every show. It's almost scripted, I think. Um, that, oh, well, you know, we're in a global recovery. Really, Bob, if we were in a global recovery, why are commodities selling off? I want, maybe you can explain that to us instead of trying to blow sunshine up our cracks. That's not the truth. The truth of the matter is um, we are stagnated. And not only are we stagnated, without, the, without central banks acting reasonably soon here, um, we're going to face another big problem um, with regard to this debt that you keep talking about. Now, what do we know? We know that world central banks uh, who are running their respective governments have no alternative but to continue to inflate. It will not stop. We cannot ever, ever, ever stop inflating the debt bubble greater than what it is right now. It's the nature of the debt-based economic model, period, the end. So um, believe me, they all know that. Donald Trump knows that now. Whether I'm sure he knew about it before he was the president. But they can sit there and talk about balancing a budget. It never happened. They can talk about trying to cut spending. It's never going to happen. They can't do it. They have to keep spend. Not only do they have to keep spending, but they have to keep spending more and greater and greater amounts. Find any reason. And I want people to pay attention to this. Any reason to borrow more cash into the future. And we already see the writing on the wall. Conflicts, more war, more weapons. Um, that's what they're going to use, I believe, as their next avenue to have an excuse to continue borrowing greater amounts of cash from the future. So uh, right now, when we look at the economy, we've been looking at it for a very long time and we see that we're not in a recovery. But for some reason, the Fed thinks we are in a recovery. And last quarter, GDP was just an anomaly at 0.7 percent. And they're saying that it's going to get a lot better. And we know their meeting is coming up in June and they're talking about raising the interest rates again. Uh -huh. And they're saying that it's going to get a lot better. And we know their meeting is coming up in June and they're talking about raising the interest rates again again. Now, do you think they're going to go forward and raise the rates? Because they're telling us that, you know, the economy is okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course they are. Well, they have they have to stick to the narrative. Are you kidding me? They, well, they have to say that all of their, and these are their words, not mine, they're extraordinary measures that they've had to employ since the 2008 market crash uh, meltdown have worked. Oh, it's a, it's a miracle. We've worked. worked. But they won't tell us all that they've had to inflate their balance sheet uh, larger now than the GDP of most countries. Now, we've been hearing quarter after quarter after quarter, oh, you know, next quarter is going to get better. Next quarter is going to get better. Here's the problem. The Federal Reserve is going to have to institute, and I said this earlier, a new stimulus package. They're not going to call it quantitative easing, but they're going to have to institute something else. So the Fed wants to unload their balance sheet, which includes mortgage-backed securities that they bought off of the big banks after the meltdown here. They've reinflated a housing bubble, so those now what were once known as toxic assets 
can be dumped onto the market and they can pocket a profit out of it. Uh, it's criminal what they've done here. Had people gotten kicked out into the streets, people lost everything. The Fed was successful in reinflating a housing bubble in the stock market bubble on the back of the biggest bubble in the history of the world, which is the debt bubble. And now they're going to unload their balance sheet. Well, how are they going to do that? They're, they're going to unload those mortgage-backed securities. They're not going to reinvest bonds. Now, what people need to understand is, and we're seeing this already, uh, with regard to the interest rates, they're kind of going up on their own here. Look at what's going on here with the 10-year yield lately. Now, if the Fed decides to do what they're going to do, what they want to do here, they're going to they're going to they're going to create a big issue with a a, a flatter yield curve. Um, when the Fed is talking about raising interest rates, they're really talking about the federal funds rate or the overnight rate. And what's going to end up happening is the short end of that curve is going to come up higher than the long end of the curve is. So you end up with a flat yield curve. And we've been seeing this flattening yield curve, even on the mainstream, they're talking about the flattening yield curve, the flattening yield curve. Flat, a flat yield curve is not a good sign. It, it, people are not having faith in the long-term debt. You understand? So what this tells us all is something is, without any doubt, on that horizon just waiting to happen. Who knows when exactly it's going to happen? I do not speculate on this anymore. World central banks have gotten very crafty and done all kinds of things to keep this thing suspended. But there's going to be a moment here when the market says, no, 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 no. Fair value. We do not have a real market. This is what drives me crazy. And people, and you, you sit there and you watch Bloomberg. You sit there and you watch CNBC. And you go to the commentators out there trying to talk about how the markets are real, how asset prices are real. We cannot have, there is not one, not one single asset class out there that has a real price discovery mechanism today because of what the Federal Reserve has done to the debt market. Everything prices off what occurs in the debt market, bond market, debt market, one and the same. If we, if we do not have the free market dictating fair value for what is occurring in the bond market, we do not have any aspect of a real market in any asset class. There is no price discovery mechanism here whatsoever. And there lies the problem, because all of this at one time will achieve a fair market value. And it's going to feel like the collapse of collapses, but it's not going to be a collapse at all. All it's going to be is a correction to fair value. Now, you mentioned the Fed trying to sell off their balance sheet. They're, they're going to reduce their balance sheet of all this toxic waste that they've accumulated. And J.P. Morgan Chase, I don't know if you saw the article where they're talking to other banks about combining the deposits because they're worried about a drain on deposits at the end of this year because <laughs> of the balance sheet you know, sell off. I mean, does that worry you? Let me say this. I think people, and I, I've actually written a couple of articles, articles about this recently. I think people are a lot smarter, or at least they are, thanks to shows like yours, um, than they were just a few years ago. And they do realize that we are now standing on the precipice of something very, very ugly, that world central banks... Um, and colluding with the Wall Street banks like the ones you just mentioned and a whole bunch more, um, are not looking at things from the perspective that this is going to benefit their clients. Uh, everything that they do is to benefit themselves at the expense of their clients. Um, and, and we saw this in real time during the meltdown when Goldman Sachs was betting against their own clients, their own clients. Uh, during the meltdown, actually selling assets to their own clients that they knew were not uh, good investments. J.P. Morgan did the same thing. Morgan Stanley did the same thing. A bunch of them all did the same. They were all doing it. So whatever these banks are going to try to do here for the quote-unquote benefit of, of their, what they're going to try to sell to people for their benefit is absolutely, it has to be looked at um, from a 180-degree a, a perspective. So the other thing I believe that we're seeing here, um, which is reflective of people starting to smarten up, um, is people getting out of 
um, their system more so than ever before. And this is leading people to, I think, cryptocurrency. Bitcoin hit another record today. This is These things are in their infancy as far as I'm concerned, uh, cryptocurrency at this time. We also found this out, and I'm, I'm glad I have the opportunity to talk about this on your show. Um, but in the last 10 years, with regard to uh, silver production, we are now ex at the, I think it's the third or second largest deficit with regard to silver production, again, in the last decade. Meanwhile, what are we watching? We're watching the price of silver and gold get punished lately while the debt bubble keeps getting inflated. You you know this as well as I do, and I'm more than certain that your listeners do. Gold and silver are the anti-debt. So does it make sense to anyone listening that from a supply and demand uh, perspective were real that the physical asset of gold and silver, silver more specifically, would be going down in price here? No, of course not. So this is the big banks, like you just mentioned, using derivatives to manipulate the price lower. How many banks have we all heard about? that have been fined, Deutsche Bank was the last one, fined, oh, a big whopping $20 million fine for being caught red-handed manipulating the price of silver. So, look, these assets here are the most undervalued in the history of the world, silver more specifically, the most undervalued asset known to man. I can't imagine another one that's more undervalued at this time. I mean, we have bubbles to the upside, which would be the debt bubble, and the anti-debt, which is gold and silver, are on the opposite end of that bubble. And this will correct at one point when, again, I don't speculate, but I want people to understand what's going on fundamentally with regard to supply and demand, which doesn't matter anymore with these assets, and again, the inflating debt bubble, which also fundamentally is not playing into the dynamics, the price action dynamics of gold and silver. So we're going to start to see more uh, people getting out of the centralized the banking cartel system uh, into cryptocurrencies um, uh, and, and hoarding, hoarding as much gold and silver as they possibly can uh, in this environment of, of suppression. Uh, I did a whole video about this today, as a matter of fact, um, when I found out about the, the deficit now we're running, the third largest in the last decade with regard to silver production. So I urge people to do their own research, look into it yourself, and, and just make sense of it yourself, and you'll understand what you need to do. So I just wanted to talk about silver for a second. Do you think that the silver, I mean, if there's such a deficit and, and we can't find silver, wouldn't you think silver prices would go up? Yeah, in a real <laughs> but, market, they should go up. If yeah. we didn't have a paper derivative market, they would go up. Why do you think right now, why are they pushing the silver price? And actually, they smacked down gold a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they did it like three days in a row or so, and they tried to bring it down. But it never got down to that $1,100 or $1,050 range again. It stayed around the $1,200, the mid-$12 and change range. Why do you think they're pushing that down right now the way they are? Well, again, they can't. They don't want co direct competition as of yet, as of yet uh, at all with regard to king dollar. And king dollar, we all know, is being dethroned. More and more countries backing away from the dollar in bilateral trade. I mean, this is no secret. This has been going on for quite a while. They're going to use every every mechanism, uh, illegal or not, uh, mostly illegal, um, to keep the prices suppressed as long as they possibly can. Um, first of all, to give opportunities to world central banks and governments and the richest people to acquire more of this stuff at these insanely, and I mean insanely, suppressed prices. Uh, do what the rich are doing right now. Do what world central banks are doing right now. Don't do what you hear that you should be doing on the mainstream financial channels because they're going to tell you that gold is a barbarous relic. They're going to tell you that you shouldn't even be touching silver. Meanwhile, if you have a few functioning brain cells, you know that's exactly where you need to be. It's that simple. Um, so we, we, if, if they are so desperate to keep these prices suppressed, again, bank after bank after bank have been caught red-handed manipulating the, the price, and the regulators turned a blind eye. The regulators don't say anything. They don't do anything. They, they slap insignificant fines on these institutions. So you, we have to, look, all you need to have literally is one eye open and maybe one functioning brain cell to realize, hey, you know, there's a reason why this is going on here. Uh, and the easiest perspective is just understand that gold and silver are the anti-debt. So take the opposite side of that trade. I look at everything as a trade. 
um, you know, whether I'm long or whether I'm short. And again, these are not actual trades. These are investments because I can promise everyone that's listening here, there's going to be a moment where every single asset, and I'm not just talking about gold and silver. I'm talking about housing. I'm talking about the debts. I'm talking about stocks so that their valuations are is higher than some of these. Uh, the, the, some of these stocks are valued higher now than they were during the dot com bubble. So you can see where we're going here, uh, and this is going to correct the fair value. I don't know when, but I'm just ready for it. And that all that cash that's sitting over there, like we were talking about, all the sell off in commodities, is waiting for some something to happen. Let's see what happens. Let's just follow it. I don't care. All of you here know. I don't care if the market goes up. I don't care if the market goes down. I'm just going to take advantage of it by getting on the right side of that trade. So I don't care. I have, I'm have. i financially sound. I don't have to worry about any of this anymore. Um, so it doesn't matter to me. But I want people to understand that if they don't look at the right spots, if if they're not ready for what can potentially happen and will happen at one particular time, they are in a lot of trouble. Well, you mentioned cryptocurrency, and I wanted to get back to cryptocurrency. And you spoke about you know how people are going to cryptocurrency, gold and silver. Many people are worried about cryptocurrency uh, because it's on the internet. You can't. It's not like gold and silver where you can hold it and and play with it and feel it. It's Cryptocurrency is electronic. And a lot of people are saying that look, Bitcoin, it's rising right now, but it's in a bubble and it's going to pop and it's going to fall. I mean, what do you say to those people that believe that Bitcoin is in a bubble? Uh, in order for an asset, any asset to be in a bubble, it has to be widely held. Bitcoin is not widely held. It has a significant market cap, um, but it is not a widely held asset. So anyone who's thinking that Bitcoin is in a bubble and you're going to wait for that bubble to pop, don't hold your breath. It's, it's, it's amazing that you actually brought this up because I'm, I'm working on an article right now kind of with that title. Uh, I believe sincerely that all cryptocurrencies and not just Bitcoin here are in their infancy with regard to their realized true value um, outside the centralized banking system. This is a fact. So anyone who's sitting here talking about how Bitcoin is in a bubble is deluded and has absolutely no clue what an asset what an asset means to actually be in a bubble. Let me put a perspective on a clear bubble so you can understand that. Let's talk about housing. Housing is widely held, very widely held, obviously. How do we know that housing is in a bubble? It, well, it's very simple. When any asset, any asset whatsoever moves beyond the ability for an average person's salary to make it affordable, you know it's in a bubble. And housing is so far out of the reach of the average Joe out here. That's how you know it's in a bubble. So am I saying that Bitcoin is going to go straight up without any corrections? Absolutely not. Every single asset moves in a particular way. It's called a random walk with an upward drift or it could be a downward drift. But in the case of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, you ain't seen nothing yet. These things are just starting. So this $1,800 Bitcoin, uh, would I buy it right now? Absolutely. Would I buy a lot of it right now? Absolutely. And I would hold on to it because I can promise you it's going much higher. Do you think the uh, central bank, uh, do they want to you know, control Bitcoin in any way or are they just going to let it go and they don't care about it? You know, I, I, I'm not sure. I think that they probably would look at Bitcoin or cryptocurrency right now uh, as, as an asset, obviously, which it is. Uh, I don't think that the Federal Reserve in any way believes that Bitcoin is a threat to the dollar because in order for Bitcoin to be a threat to the dollar, number one, it would have to be widely held. Number two, it would have to be used by central banks to fulfill their debt obligations to each other. We'd have to actually threaten the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency, which is not happening in our lifetime. Uh, so I don't believe that at this time. Absolutely not. Well, let me ask you this question. Since there's more and more uh, places that are accepting Bitcoin for, you know, um, cars, how about BMW? BMW so, accepts Bitcoin. <laughs> so so what happens if let, uh, let's use this example. If your employer pays you in Bitcoin 
then you use Bitcoin to purchase goods, you're completely bypassing the dollar. Mm -hmm. And do you actually, if you never turn it into dollars, do you actually have to pay the government any taxes on it because you're not using the Federal Reserve note? Exactly. There's the, there's the fly in the ointment with regard to the use of, of, of a cryptocurrency. Uh, and you pretty much sum that up. The problem with the government um, I think, and there may be, they probably are working on a fix for this. I'm not sure how they would do this, honestly, um, is, is for one against tax reasons. And also because a, a lot of uh, crime uh, is transacted in, in these uh, decentralized units. So I, I'm very curious to see how that plays out as well. But um, other than that, I, I really feel that these things we we really haven't seen anything yet because we know what, what world central banks are going to do. They're going to continue to inflate. They have no alternative but to inflate. They're going to kill the value of their currency, uh, of the paper fiat currency. It's uh, It will probably at one time or have potentially could reach its intrinsic value of zero. Um, and people need already are starting to get smart to the prospect that um, we're in a bubble with regard to debt. And they're looking for alternatives to the dollar, to the euro, uh, to all of these fiat currencies. And that's what we're seeing this explosion here. And I'll tell you something else. The, the powers that be, at least the way that the cryptocurrencies are set up, can't manipulate them. What they can do, um, maybe, is get in there and buy large amounts of it and then sell it back onto the market and run some, some kind of a pump and dump. Um, but the only manipulation that can possibly happen, and it's not even manipulation, is when a large buyer gets in there, let's say a thinly traded cryptocurrency, which of, of which there are many. Uh, Bitcoin is not the only one, as you are well aware of. I don't know if many people know that. But thinly traded cryptocurrencies can have large fluctuations in their price because of some big buyer or a big seller. But that's it. So these decentralized uh, units of wealth, um, I, I really think that this action that we've seen lately is is just the beginning and again just to just because i know people are going to say if it goes down 200 dollars tomorrow people are going to say greg was wrong no greg was not wrong these things are going to fluctuate in value just like the dollar does just like the euro does just like every other single asset does too so um before people make comments like that they should know what they're talking about so we've been talking about the economy i had you on many times before and we always end up talking about how everything's going to end and since uh, i guess what is it like almost a year now since i've had you on um is everything still on track where the economy is going to collapse and be worse than 2008 or have things changed are things getting better where do we stand right now i think if we were to look around the world uh, we would see that things are not going very well it looks like we're marching towards more conflicts which is again being engineered um, by the uh, the central banks i mean the the u.s military is the enforcement arm of the federal reserve uh, and this is a fact Look up the petrodollar for anyone that doesn't believe what I just said. Um, and I think the last places to be affected by this are going to be the large economies and ours being, uh, well, with the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, unfortunately. Um, but it's going to hit us here in the United States last. Um, the issue of a collapse is is pretty straightforward here. It's really, and I've been talking about this for a very long time, it's not really a collapse that we're going to experience more than a correction to a fair value. Um, I think I've laid out a pretty case over the years and even on the show right now how world central banks have distorted the debt market and twisted everything. There's no price discovery mechanism behind one single asset um, at this time and that will correct to a fair value the, the free market always wins it takes time but it always does and that's why we get these bubbles and that's is specific and this is why the federal reserve can get away with what they do uh, they try to make it appear as if it's a natural 
order uh, to these bubbles, but it's actually the world's central banks that are that are responsible for and deliberately do continue to inflate bubbles so they can deflate them. Every time they inflate a bubble and they deflate these bubbles, it, there's a wealth transfer effect from the middle class to the upper class. The, the, the lower class, they don't have any money anyway. It doesn't matter. But this is a continual fleecing effect. It's almost like a wave that we see over and over again, almost in a rhythmic pattern. We had the, the, the dot-com bubble in 2000. We had the 2008 meltdown. Now we're here. Eight years later, are we close to another pop? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if we are. Everything is so stretched and so twisted and so distorted. I think we're overdue. Um, but I also believe that world central banks will not pull the plug on this until they get every last dollar squeezed out of every single person that they possibly can investing in real estate, investing in the stock market. They're gonna, they are going to create legions of desperate and destitute people this time when this bubble bursts because when this one bursts, there's going to be no way that they can reinflate an yet another housing bubble and another a uh, stock market bubble on the back of a debt bubble because that's going to be the bubble that's going to pop and we are going to end up in a currency crisis as well because fiat currency all of them these are units of debt uh they are not units of wealth again hence the move to cryptocurrencies that we're seeing lately and i can promise you when all this happens we are going to see the true realized value of assets including gold and silver which are going to take off and I mean take off um, as the value of debt. And again, fiat currency, U.S. dollar being a unit of debt, realize their true value. Greg, thank you very much for being on the X22 Report Spotlight. Once again, how can people see your work? Go to my website, traderschoice.net, or follow me now on the Steemit platform. Not only are we seeing commodities under pressure here, I'm referring to crude oil as well, um, but we're also seeing a lot of cash come out of the bond market. You know, I watch the bond market more than I watch the stock market. I get all my signals as to what's going to happen in the stock market from the bond market. We've seen a lot of cash come out of the bond market. What that has been doing is pushing up the, the their yields. The 10-year yield specifically is the benchmark that most people should follow that are looking to gain uh, a direction on where the market goes. So, into a, into a little nice package. So we got a stock market that's going nowhere, kind of at the flat line for a while. We have um, a sell-off here across the board, pretty much in commodities. We have a sell-off in the bond market. We have a dollar that's under pressure. And this has been pretty much the theme for the past several weeks. So what what is what's the signal here? And it's a great question, and I want people to think about it. So all this cash that has been coming out of commodities, that has been coming out of the bond market coming out of investors that are in the dollar is kind of waiting. It's kind of sitting there on the side, just waiting for somewhere to go. We saw some of this just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, where some of that cash that was sitting on the sidelines was making its way over to crude oil, which made a, a th over 3% move in one day. So what I'm waiting for um, is to see where this, this cash that has come out of all these assets where it's going to go next, it also could be used to short the market. So this comes into where you were talking about insiders that are getting out of the market. I've been hearing this too um, for quite a while now. Are, are these insiders going to use the cash that they're pulling out of the market to buy Today we have a returning guest, Greg Manorino. He has his website, TradersChoice.net, and his YouTube channel, Greg Manorino. And I am very happy to have him back. It is great to be here once again. Thank you for having me. Hey, Greg, thanks for being on here. And let's talk about the economy here. Okay. Now, you're into stocks, and we've been seeing that the stock market really hasn't been moving. I mean, it bounces around a very little bit, but no major moves at all. And I've been seeing reports that insiders are getting out of 
the stock market now. And I wanted to get your take on what's happening in the market. Are insiders getting out at this point? And where do you think the market is going? That's a great question. And I'm telling you something is going on. And it's a very interesting dynamic. I'm, uh, and I, I'm happy to talk about it here. So what have we been watching with regard to the stock market for, for the past couple of weeks? It's gone nowhere. No big moves in any direction. Um, interestingly, is we're seeing the VIX, the volatility index, hit a 24-year low. What we are seeing here um, is a pretty much meltdown across the board with regard to commodities. Um, that is a very telling thing. And what I want people to just understand at its most basic level is you cannot have a commodity meltdown um, in an environment where we're supposedly in some type of a global economic recovery. Uh, the commodities are sending us a signal loud and clear that something is going on. Now it's the nature of the debt-based economic model, period, the end. So um, believe me, they all know that. Donald Trump knows that now. Whether I'm sure he knew about it before he was the president. But they can sit there and talk about balancing a budget. It never happened. They can talk about trying to cut spending. It's never going to happen. They can't do it. They have to keep spend. Not only do they have to keep spending, but they have to keep spending more and greater and greater amounts. Find any reason. And I want people to pay attention to this. Any reason to borrow more cash into the future. And we already see the writing on the wall. Conflicts, more war, more weapons. Um, that's what they're going to use, I believe, as their next avenue to have an excuse to continue borrowing greater amounts of cash from the future. So uh, right now, when we look at the economy, we've been looking at it for a very long time and we see that we're not in a recovery. But for some reason, the Fed thinks we are in a recovery. And last quarter GDP was just an anomaly of 0.7 percent. And they're saying that it's going to get a lot better. And we know their meeting is coming up in June and they're talking about raising the interest rates again. Uh -huh. And they're saying that it's going to get a lot better. And we know their meeting is coming up in June and they're talking about raising the interest rates again. Now, do you think they're going to go forward and raise the rates? Because they're telling us that, you know, the economy is okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course they are. Well, they have they have to stick to the narrative. Are you kidding me? They, well, they have to say that all of their, and these are their words, not mine, they're extraordinary measures that they've had to employ since the 2008 market crash uh, meltdown have worked. Oh, it's a, it's a miracle. We've worked. worked. But they won't tell us all that they've had to inflate their balance sheet uh, larger now than the GDP of most countries. Now, we've been puts or bet against the market. Are they waiting for assets to turn around here? Um, I'm not really sure, but I can promise you this. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for opportunity here. And I, I'm not sure of the direction of the market here. Honestly, in the short run, we've had quite a, a run up lately. I would not be surprised to see the stock market give back a little bit. I, I would love to see the stock market give back a little bit to it so we can get in on better prices. But are we about to witness some event here? I mean, I don't know. That's what I'm trying. I've been talking to a lot of friends of mine who have been traders. One of my friends has been a trader for over 30 years. And we're all, we all talk about this stuff. Okay, where's all this cash that is sitting on the sidelines? Where's it going to go? Is it going to go into this asset? Is it going to go back into the stock market, back into the bond market? Is it going to be used to short the entire market? Don't know yet. Um, but it's very interesting to watch that. But my biggest tip that I, I, that I can give anyone is watch the 10-year yield. We hit 2.4 today. Um if that continues to rise, um, we're going to start to see pressure on the stock market. There is no doubt about it. So you'll see some more cash come out of there. And then again, what do we all know, people? We know that cash does not go to money heaven. It's going to go somewhere else. So all this cash that's leaving these assets is going to find someplace else to go. It's going to go back into commodities. I think it might do that. But we have to watch it and see. 
Do you think that they're pulling their cash out of the market because of what's happening in the economy or what's happening with the debt ceiling or the budget? Um, because right now they, they signed off on a budget that will bring the government all the way to September 30th. It's another trillion dollars. And the debt ceiling, we know we're going to hit that. And the economy all around us, I mean, how many more retail stores are closing now? We just hear one after another. Do you think people are nervous? Do I think, you know what? Anyone that's watching the mainstream financial channels, they're not nervous at all because they're being brainwashed. They're, they're, they're zombies that have been, fortunately, thank God for shows like yours. Um, the, these people, for the most part, unless they're out there trying to find a job and they can't do it, um, uh, most people who already, I guess, have a job right now are, again, living in their uh, moment to moment, you know, not thinking ahead. Uh, living in the moment and not realizing what's really going on all around them. Absolutely. Retail's, retail's getting punished. Stores closing all over the place. This is going to cost people jobs. We are not in an economic recovery whatsoever. And again, commodities are telling us that. Commodities are telling us that we are not in a recovery. Like you, would, if you were to turn on CNBC, you're going to hear Bob Pisani. I happen to like the guy. But all he does is talk, it, talk about it at the end of pretty much every uh, every show. It's almost scripted, I think. Um, that, oh, well, you know, we're in a global recovery. Really, Bob, if we were in a global recovery, why are commodities selling off? I want to, maybe you can explain that to us instead of trying to blow sunshine up our cracks. That's not the truth. The truth of the matter is um, we are stagnated. And not only are we stagnated, without, the, without central banks acting reasonably soon here, um, we're going to face another big problem um, with regard to this debt that you keep talking about. Now, what do we know? We know that world central banks uh, who are running their respective governments have no alternative but to continue to inflate. It will not stop. We cannot ever, ever, ever stop inflating the debt bubble greater than what it is right now. 